Hello, this is Arden Kirkland. I'm going to show you some important things to consider when designing an exhibit theme in Omeka. And I'm going to use a current work in progress to demonstrate this. This is a site for an inventory of public art in Oneida County. The focus has been on the database side of Omeka. But they're planning a bus tour in the spring, and I'm looking at using the exhibit format to share a tour with some of the artworks in a logical driving order. So you'll see um, this is a work in progress, really just beginning progress. So it only has dummy text. Uh, many of the features, such as this navigation, aren't styled yet, so they're not so very attractive. But you start to see, you know, how it might come together. And I want to use this as a way of pointing out the fact that Omeka considers your content separate from its appearance. And at any time you can change to a different theme. Here we're just using the same public theme as the rest of the site. Um, but we can change that and see how it looks in different ways. I also want to show, um, you know, having this content in here, even if a lot of it is just dummy text, helps me to experiment with different options with the layout. So you're seeing this admin side now, and this is the new and improved interface that I promised in another video. You can see how the pages are arranged in an outline form, and you can even do one more level of nesting if you want. Um, so yeah, I can change the theme to see it in a very different way. So let's just go through these in order. I'm just gonna change the theme and save it. And now if I go to that tour page and I refresh the page, you're going to see that it's going to look completely different. And this is just, this is where the theme is changing. So you see different options, how the navigation appears. Um, this is the navigation for the tour versus the navigation for the, the main site. Um, here's our link to the next page. And we can just go through a couple different kind of sample pages there. Again, not fully styled yet, just using some of the um, existing themes to start playing around with this. Um, using the navigation here on the side. Um, you can see some of the different things. So you've seen that we've got the primary navigation for the exhibit. You see when I'm on the introduction page, which only has one page, it just shows those sections. But if I go into a section, it shows me the pages inside those sections. And that's something that you can show or hide, have appear in many different ways. You can have the links to the next page or not. Um, you can have different columns like this with it on the side, or put it at the top or at the bottom. Another thing that's different is the size of the photos. So in some cases, these are um, shown as large images, but how large can be set in the theme. So you're seeing some different sizes there. So let's look at another one now. Let's go back and change and see the next one. Go over here and refresh again. Okay, now we're seeing this is a, again, a very simple existing layout, but here we've got different columns. So the main navigation for the site is on the left. The navigation for the exhibit is on the right. If I go back, to one of those sections that only has one page, you see again that when you're not in a particular section, you don't see the pages for that particular section. That's something that you see when you're in that section. So again, that choice to hide um, more of the navigation or not. The next and previous links here.
And again, seeing here, these are uh, images. The images are a little bit larger in this view than they were in one of the others. And let's look at one more. Change to the seasons theme. And refresh. Here you're seeing, again, photos even larger this time. Um, you've got the navigation for the exhibit at the top. So here's the main navigation for the exhibit. But again, if I go into a section that has multiple pages, then I have secondary navigation for those pages. And even a couple options of how those might appear. So you see that previous view, we'll go back, had the secondary navigation down below here, but then for some reason this view has a different, that has that secondary navigation right below there. Larger images, single column, next and previous links at the bottom, So just to get you thinking about how all of these things could definitely be different. There are lots of possibilities, and this is just a good way to see that the same content can look very different in, uh, in different examples. So the questions for you are, where do you want the navigation to be at the top, on the side? Do you want some of the items to be collapsed or not? How do you want that to appear? Um, thinking about the hierarchies of how things are grouped. So what ends up in those top level groups? What are the pages within? You could even have another level of content nested below that. Is this clear to your users? Or do you think the navigation on the side that really shows the outline form is more clear, depending on what you want to show? Thinking of that outline form, I just want to revisit something from another video. One option is to really think of um, the, the layout of a physical exhibit, especially if you are mirroring what is in fact a physical exhibit. But I don't want that to hold you back for a digital exhibit because you can definitely think outside of the white box when it comes to the digital version. Um, really think about how you can transcend what can happen in a physical space. Um, there's a lot of content that you can share digitally that you could never share physically in the same way. Also really think about how different levels in your hierarchy can scaffold learning for your viewers. Um, could you nest different content for different levels of interest, different grade levels? What about sharing different nested content related to different thematic aspects? Cultural influences, related artists, infinite possibilities there of the kinds of content that you could nest in there. You also need to think about how you want to lay out your pages. Um, and I'm bringing up this example that I showed in another video again to think about do you want to have fewer pages so that there's less, there, you know, so there are fewer items in your navigation menus. So for example, this page, you do a lot of scrolling to get through these three images, but you could also choose to do each one on a separate page, but then that would 
add more navigation items, more pages in here. So that's a choice. You also can use what I think of as kind of collage type pages with, with grids, or you could do other custom layouts um, to get an effect like this, that you're just showing a thumbnail of something that then links to your main database site um, so that you're not going into a ton of detail about it in the exhibit itself, but linking back out. So there are lots of options there. And again, for all of those, you can think about, again, I'm bringing back another example from another video, thinking of kind of that grid of how things are arranged on the page. And can you accomplish that with some of the existing page layouts or do we need to create some custom layouts as I did here to get the, the layout that you want? You also need to think about how it's going to look on different screen sizes on mobile devices. So just for a quick view of that, um, I'm just going to, here, let me close what's behind here. And I'm just going to kind of drag this to show different size. You see how things kind of rearrange and get smaller um, when I switch to a smartphone size or a tablet size. So that's something that you want to test and account for in your design of your page. Um, of course, you also want to think about how this ties into other parts of your site. So thinking about how it relates to any other content that you have within the same website or other websites for the same project same colors, same fonts, that same look and feel, having consistency there. All right, so I'm sure that leaves you with lots of questions about how to do all this with your own project. So please contact me. Here is my email address, and I look forward to hearing from you and helping out with your project.